All right, how to slice rump steak. So hopefully this tutorial on how to slice rump helps anybody potentially either buying a whole rump or even just learning themselves as an apprentice. So to begin with, I'm just gonna take it out of its packet and then proceed to pat it dry with a clean rag just to get rid of any of this excess blood just to make it a bit more stable and won't slide around on the bench as much. Okay, so now that I've got it out, it's been dried off, it's ready to go, I can continue to process. And the first step will be to remove any of the bark and excess fat that's left on the rump from when it was boned out. So I reckon the best method to remove any bark and sinew and fat from the underneath of this rump would just be to pop your knife underneath the surface and just remove it slightly bit by bit. More or less just following the undulations of the muscle itself. Now there is a little top muscle that sits on top of the rump here, which you can remove and that will be going towards mince or diced beef. Now the larger amount of fat that's under my hand there will all need to be removed. By removing this fat, it will expose the seam that holds the top cap on. So just slowly work your way down and around the muscle and just pushing off that fat and cutting that fat away bit by bit. Once again, moving around to this side here, removing this little top bit of muscle that you can trim out for mince and sausage trim, and then once again, removing the fat and sinew. Then just one final check over to make sure I've removed everything that needs to become off. So now I've trimmed this up, we're up to slicing. So the first thing we'll need to do is remove a face cut. Now, as you can see there, there is a fairly large bit of sinew there on that first cut that you can see in the middle. So this face cut is designed to remove the large majority of that sinew. So therefore every other steak is going to have no sinew or very minimal sinew. So you can quite clearly see that sinew in the middle there. That won't be wasted though, we will trim that up and dice it for diced beef. Now we'll just add that I do slice the rumps fat down on the bench, which is the more uncommon way of slicing rump. I just find that it keeps its shape a lot better, sits a lot more stable and it's a lot easier to actually slice. Now the first two stakes that we take off are going to fall one way. As you can see, they've fallen away from where I'm slicing. And then every stake after the first two will fall the opposite way. Now that's just to get the best face on display for when you actually put it in the window. So as you can see there, turn it around and then that's the best face. And now you'll be able to see that from here on out, my slices will fall the opposite way. Now as you're slicing, if you keep your non-knife hand up against the face there, it'll help keep it stable and it'll stop it from sliding or moving around. And just really focus on as you push through with your knife to keep the actual point of the knife on the bench. So I like to think of it as more of like a push and drag motion rather than like a soaring of bread motion. Okay, so moving on to trimming. The idea of trimming the steak is display purposes only. So if you're doing this at home and you've bought a whole rump or you've taken an animal in the bush, you don't have to trim the fat off at all. A lot of people do prefer that fat left on. 
but as this is for a shop, we will just trim that fat and try and make it a nice, even, smooth, rounded edge. You'll just have to more or less manipulate your knife as the fat doesn't go on a direct straight line down. It will angle back towards. So as you see, as I trim, my knife is on that slight angle just to so that, try and keep the fat even thickness on the top and bottom. Now by hitting up your local butcher to slice out a whole rump for you, you can dictate how much fat you want left on or taken off. There you go, end result. Thanks for watching, like and share.